That you young fella. Come here. Sit down there if you have a minute. Listen to this. I'll tell you something strange. There's an item there in the paper that put it into my head. You see an Ulster? All this time passed. They've been having all these bombings, mm -hmm. killings, all the knee cabins. I mean, that thing yesterday, that was terrible. Mm. But would you credit this now? Sex crimes are not one iota higher than they ever were. In fact, I'm not sure they're not lower than they ever were. Well, it's hard to get to the truth of it. The legendary purity of the Irish. How's that? It was in a book I was reading. This gang of bank robbers in Chicago. Public enemy number one stuff. Murder. A lot. Papers called them the Mad Dog Gang. And the guy who wrote the book had this bit where he said, there is no record of irregularity in their sex lives and that they preserved the legendary purity of the Irish. What their names have been? Names? Huh. I don't know. O'Banion, probably. All right. There's a lot of them RCs in crime. Long, are you going to be hanging around the house? Oh, no, Long. I'm a quick healer. Anyway, I think your old man enjoys my company since I had my appendix out. He's always looking for a blather. Dear God, is he short of company or something? It's all right, I don't mind. Oh, good for you. I don't mind. Look, not meaning to be uncivil or anything, but since when did your lodging money buy you the use of the kitchen? You can sit in here, it'll be more comfortable. Great, thanks. Sit down. It's really nice, eh? Sorry about your foot. Sounds horrible. Oh, I've been very brave. How did you hear about it? Peter told me. My brain must have slowed up with sitting in the house. Peter who? Peter Kilpatrick. He lodges here like you. Oh, that Peter Kilpatrick. The toast bandit. Didn't know you knew him. Well, I'd be bound to since I'm in the club. In the what? More Hill Harriers. I joined him when I was 14. Peter was a big star then, especially for us girls. He's got marvellous thighs. What about you? I, I mean, do you still do the running bit? I won the 400 in two universities. Oh, that's terrific. <clears throat> yeah, I never knew that. The world's full of people who haven't heard the news yet. I could do with a bit of exercise myself. Might join the club next winter. Well, after your foot's better? Yeah, no problem. <laughs> I have to go back to the hospital next week. They're going to amputate. But they tell me you get used to the ten foot in no time. Of course, I wouldn't go in for the marathon and the sprints might be a bit much. Something in between. Well, I, I think it's really brave of you to want to, but I don't think you could be a miler or anything. I mean, not with an impediment. <laughs> I was... I was just joking. Joking? <laughs> I've got a stupid sense of humour. It's great that you came. I mean, it's not as if as if we know one another. No, I mean, we don't know one another well. Look, I had to come. Oh, great. Peter asked me to give you this. Someone's going to call for it, a man called Brond. Who? Brond. I'm sure that's what Peter said. Why did Kilpatrick give it to you? Why didn't he just give it to me himself? Well, he's away to his uncle's. Kilpatrick's away? Yeah, to his uncle's. So why should I care? You don't have to. You just have to give that to Brond. Why would Kilpatrick want to give it to me? I mean... Look, I'm just trying to do someone a favour. You're going on as if I'm trying to commit a crime or something. It's just that I don't see why me. I thought he was a mate of Muldoon's. Well, it's you I know. Right. Terrific. It's 
That's right enough then. Go Patrick's away. If he's gone, he's left in an awful hurry. He's taken nothing. His toothbrush is still here. That girl. Her name's Margaret. Margaret Vroidy. Yeah, what did she say? Did she say that he'd gone to live with her? No, she's just a friend. Even if Patrick's entitled to one friend. Leave alone what doesn't belong to you, can't you? She did say he had brilliant thighs. Huh? Well, Patrick, according to Margaret Brody, he's got brilliant thighs. Sure, it's the way the young girls do be talking now. There's no shame. Are you trying to open that? No. If you don't want it, why don't you give it back to her? I mean, she seems to know where he is, doesn't she? Yours, I think. You're supposed to keep it all as collected. Well, it started to tick. What? You know, tick as in tick tock. If it's going to explode, I thought it'd be nice to go together. Yeah, it's all right. I'm sorry. Why did you say it was a bomb? It's just a joke. I don't understand your mentality. Do you never read the papers? Babies in prams burned and people all blown to bits. It's not funny. Fools like you making jokes. You think God would strike you down or something? She's still watching us. What? Girl over there. She thinks we're having a lover quarrel. a lovely young girl you're with. Are you intending to get married? Oh, I was just saying, I was just telling your young man here. My husband, when he knew he was died, didn't he tell me? That was not his way. He just put a lock on the door. What kind was it again? A mortis. Aye, a mortis lock and a bolt and a chain. He was at it nearly the whole afternoon. And I thought that was so funny because he wasn't a handyman, you know. But a wee bolt at the top and a chain and a wee spy hole for Pete and Pete. And when I asked him what he was doing all that for, he said, <laughs> I want you to be safe, dear. It's not as though I was a friend of Kilpatrick's. Look, let's just enjoy our tea and not taking it back. But what about that woman that let me in when I came to see you? She would keep it for blonde. Jackie wouldn't touch it with a barge pole. Why? What did you say to her? Nothing. Kilpatrick hadn't taken any stuff with him. She thought there was something funny going on. Jackie? You must be pretty friendly with her. You don't appreciate how lovable I am. What? You don't appreciate how lovable I am. That's right. Mind you, you certainly need someone to look after you. You're applying for the job. Sorry? Nothing. That police whistle. The one my husband gave me. I blew into it once. Don't know why. It was all dusty by then. Ugh, horrible. I made some noise just the same, and I thought, here, I'll wake all the neighbours in the middle of the night. Well, that made me laugh so much. <laughs> there wasn't anything to be afraid of. <laughs> I don't think I ever thanked you. I mean, really thanked you for, for what you did with that maniac, Davy. I might have died.
Don't whine. You were beginning to whine back there. Sometimes it's better to say nothing. Believe me, that's sincere advice. You forgot the parcel. That's to go as well. Say one thing for you. You know how to take advice. What are you doing down there? This is my house. Go ahead and chop it. your daddy sometime. We're up there. Sit down. This has nothing to do with me. I'm not even a friend of Kilpatrick's. Help yourself. It must have been a great temptation to find out what was in here. They are more interesting than they feel. The condemned man drank a hearty breakfast. It's just a towel. Go, Patrick, cut somebody. Give me your hand. Is that a gun? I don't know anything about guns. This done here. Look, 
cold, not hungry, alive, here in this warm room, with a glass of Ockentosh. What can we possibly have done to deserve it? What a perfect moment to die. 